So the Matrix Resurrections just came out, and yes, I've seen it. What did I think of it? I'd probably give it about a 6 or 6.5 out of 10. I thought there were some elements that really worked, and I thought there were other elements that really did not work. Now, I'm not here to review the movie as a whole. Maybe I'll do that another time. Maybe I won't. Um, what I really want to do is use this movie as a springboard to launch into a topic that the movie raises, which I think is a very interesting topic that a lot of us are thinking about lately. It's the question of whether popular culture is in terminal decline. Uh, is everything now a copy of a copy of a copy? Does everything suck now? Is it impossible to recapture the originality and novelty of older stuff? And this is actually a question that is posed very directly in the movie itself because there's a scene where, like, the whole movie is very meta. Like, basically, part of the plot is that Neo is now working for, I shit you not, for Warner Brothers and that they're making a series of Matrix video games that are essentially, like, the same as the original Matrix trilogy. And when they're all discussing it in the boardroom, they're talking about, like, yeah, the first Matrix, it was such a huge hit. But we, but we just can't recapture that originality anymore. Uh, you know, nothing seems as fresh as it did back then, as awesome as it did back then. And of course, this could be seen as meta commentary on the movie itself because it's true. Nothing does seem as fresh or as awesome in this movie as it did in the original film or even for that matter in the second and third Matrix films. Like the second and third films were a lot better than this one and the action was a lot better uh, the story was a lot better. And it's almost like it's making a commentary on how much it sucks. It's trying to almost justify how much it sucks by by pointing to it, saying, yes, this movie sucks and it's self-aware of the fact that it sucks. So does that make it suck less? Maybe, maybe not. But uh, aside from that, and there was also a scene where apparently the Merovingian was talking about the same thing. Now, I could not understand a single fucking word that the Merovingian said throughout that rant. And from what I've heard from people who actually were able to understand it, maybe it's people who have access to HBO Max in the United States who are able to stream it with subtitles now, uh, which I unfortunately can't because I live in Canada and shitty fucking Crave doesn't get movies until two months after HBO Max does fucking... But yet it's still the most expensive streaming service. Fucking piece of shit crave. But anyway, um, my point is... My point is, supposedly, in that scene, the Merovingian is talking about how... Um, is it all the Matrix things? We are so much better. We had culture. We had class. We had art. Now this new Matrix is shit. And the funny thing is, the way he's talking about it, it sounds like a meta commentary, like, oh, the original Matrix trilogy was so much better than this film. But it also, in some ways, echoes a lot of the things the alt-right says about art and architecture and culture in general. And, like, the Merovingian could definitely be a stand-in for the alt-right because he's a guy who's very obsessed with, like, European culture, French culture in particular. Like, he, he lived in this chateau that is built in the style of historic French chateaus in the, in the Loire Valley and the surrounding area. And... Yeah, I mean, he's very much into that kind of stuff, like European art, European architecture, philosophy, etc. And it could be a commentary on the alt-right, too, like the idea that, like, everything has gotten worse, and he's pissed off about it. He hates the new culture the way things are now. So it could be both these things. And I think it's interesting to analyze these ideas, because on one hand, you have the alt-right sentiment that, like, things have been getting worse since World War II, but then on the other hand, you have the more mainstream sentiment, which is also echoed among the right wing, the alt-right and the greater right. But even among some liberals and some like total normies, which is the idea that culture has been in, in terminal decline in the last decade or so, popular culture, specifically movies, TV shows, uh, music, and even video games. Now, the interesting thing is, when asking the question of whether popular culture is in decline, 
there's a lot of interesting aspects to this. Firstly, I think one huge thing about this is you have to understand like people do have a tendency to idealize and prefer things from their childhood, from when they were growing up. Not necessarily childhood, but even even into like your early 20s. Like things that came out when you were still a relatively young person. And we see this among each generation, whereas, you know, the stuff my generation tends to idealize, the millennials, we tend to idealize a lot of stuff from the 90s and the 2000s. Whereas the generations before us, like a lot of Gen Xers will actually idealize things from the 70s and 80s, which is why, for instance, one thing I remember when listening to TRS and their Gen Xers, like TRS, the guys, the main Daily Showa guys, they're all born, I think, between 1975 and 1980. I guess McNabb slightly later, but Mike and Sven were both born in, I think, 77 or 78. And they tend to view the 1990s as the decade when things started to get shitty, like music in particular, but also movies. They said m movies and music started to get shitty in the 1990s. And that's what I find interesting because to me, the 1990s were the peak decade. Um, it was in actually, in my opinion, in the late 2000s when things started to get shitty and then in the 2010s when the decline was in the full swing. Whereas for them, TRS, these guys who were born more or less 10 years before I was, uh, for them, the decline actually started in the 1990s. Whereas to me, the 1990s were the peak, the peak of popular culture, like literally like they say in, in the Matrix, 1999, the peak of your civilization, which is a very ironic comment because in terms of movies, 1999 is often regarded by many people as being the peak year. Like many people say 1999 was the best year ever for movies. And a lot of people in my generation in particular say that. And what I find interesting about this, and of course, again, like the boomers they go even earlier, like they say the best stuff was in the 50s and 60s. And, you know, it goes back further and further with each generation. Uh, Gen Z might even now be saying the best stuff was in the 2010s. Who knows? But my point is, each generation does seem to, to some extent, idealize popular culture for, from when they grew up. Now, it may not mean they idealize everything from when they grew up. Like, for instance, do I like 1990s architecture? Fuck no. Um, every decade since World War II has been shit for architecture and has been shit for visual art. But when it comes to movies, TV shows, music, video games, and to an extent books... I'd say, yes, a lot of my favorite stuff is from when I grew up. Like, I'd say for me, for personally, for movies, the peak was about 1994 to 2005. And to a lesser extent, the years surrounding that. So, like, maybe in a broader sense, the peak was like 1990 to 2010. And more specifically, 1994 to 2005 was like the absolute peak. Uh, for TV shows, I would say the peak came a little bit later, and a lot of people would agree on this. Um, I'd say the peak of TV shows was basically, um, I would say, 1999 to approximately maybe 2017. Like, I actually think the de TV shows, the golden age of TV has been a bit more recent, and we're only starting to see the first stage of decline in the last few years, whereas movies, we've been seeing it a bit longer. Uh, video games, I would say, reached their peak in the 2000s, um, the early 2010s. And even late 90s, like the technology wasn't fully there yet, but there were some really good games in the late 90s, like very late 90s, like 98, 99. Like you had Half-Life, SimCity 3000. Uh, I've never been huge into Nintendo, but a lot of people love some of the Nintendo games like Legend of Zelda from the late 90s. And so again, like late 90s, I think were when video games started to get good. And I think they reached their peak in the, in the 2000s and early 2010s. Now... 
Uh, music, I think, reached its peak also, in my opinion, like modern music. I'm not talking like classical music. Like you can debate like what's better, Beethoven or Pink Floyd, uh, Beethoven or Radiohead. I don't have an answer to that debate. It's an interesting question. But as far as modern music goes, I'd say in, in terms of my personal tastes, I think it reached its peak in the 90s and the 2000s especially the early 2000s even in the late 2000s it started to decline a little bit but not as much as in the 2010s now with music i do like a lot of music from the 70s too like i am a big fan of like i guess you'd say the the epic rock operas like stuff like you know stairway to heaven comfortably numb like those kinds of songs and i do think Pink Floyd has some of the greatest albums of all time. However, that being said, despite the fact that I do love some 70s music, overall, if you didn't talk about what I what I actually listen to on a day-to-day -day basis, like, yes, a lot of my favorite music is from the 90s and 2000s. Now, I think, um, as I've said, a lot of this is age-based. Like, people do have a tendency to idealize stuff from when they were growing up. And also another interesting aspect of that is that there are a lot of people who grew up around the same time I did because the millennials are actually known as the echo boom because we're the children of baby boomers. And there were a whole lot of babies born in, in North America. And maybe, I don't know if it's also true in what, in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, probably Australia, New Zealand. I'm not so sure about Europe, but there definitely is such a thing as the baby boom in North America, hugely, like there was a huge baby boom after World War II. And then the millennials are called the echo boom because we are the children of those boomers. We were born at the time when those boomers came of age to have children. So what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of fucking millennials. There's a lot of millennials and there's a lot more of us than there are of the surrounding generations. Like Gen X and Gen Z are both much smaller generations than we are. Uh, the millennials are the echo boom. So what that means is there's a lot of us. And what that means is there's a lot of people who idealize and grew up in the time period that I did and who idealize basically media from the same era. It may not be exactly the same movies. In some cases it is though, like the original Matrix film, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, the Dark Knight was kind of at the tail end of when we grew up, but still, but still in it. Um, you know, so the Dark Knight films, uh, Lord of the Rings, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films, the original Matrix, the original Matrix trilogy as a whole, uh, Jurassic Park, the first one, um, you know, stuff like that. Like we grew up like Terminator 2, like we grew up with movies from a certain era and TV shows also video games, music, books from that era, like Harry Potter would be another huge example. Uh, the Simpsons, uh, back when it was good. Like, there's a lot of stuff from that era that we tend to idealize. Even South Park. And South Park actually had a very good episode years ago commenting on this phenomenon. It's The episode is called You're Getting Old. It's actually a very sad episode. Like, it's actually, on an emotional level, bizarrely enough, a, this South Park episode really hit home to me. Because I think it came out in about 2014. And that was around the time, or maybe a little bit earlier... Um, it came out around the time when I was really starting to feel that like pop culture was in decline. And this is sort of what the episode was about, which ironically would apply to South Park itself too. But if that was a really good episode, even if the decline, even if South Park was kind of already in decline when it came out. Um, and it was basically about like, I think it was it Stan or Kyle. I think it was Stan thinking that everything's getting shitty. And as a metaphor for that, he just starts seeing shit everywhere. And it's sort of a metaphor for, I think, how many people, especially in my generation, which is the generation that grew up watching South Park, uh, are feeling about a lot of things. Like, things are getting really shitty. And everything sucks. Everything is a copy of a copy of a copy. Which is ironic, because that quote comes from Fight Club, which was released during what many consider, especially my generation, to be the greatest year ever for cinema. And yet... They are making that statement back then. And because, again, Fight Club was something that was kind of made by and for Gen Xers, even though a lot of millennials really love it. And to them, uh, to them, the decline was already in full swing then. they they A lot of these Gen Xers saw the 90s as being when the decline was happening. Whereas for us, 
millennials, we see this decline as happening a bit later. So like this, this sense that everything is declining, I think it does have something to do with age. It has something to do with the fact that as you get older, you naturally feel it's not really your day anymore, at least in terms of pop culture and stuff like that. Um, it may feel like your day in the sense that this is the time to like engage in more ambitious things, like to have a family, to build your career, to do some maybe more adventurous or more expensive travel than before, at least before COVID fucked that all up. Although I've been managing to get on, uh, had to put in a few good trips during COVID, but that's because I've been busting my balls and jumping through a million hoops to do it. But anyway, that point aside, yes. Despite the fact that, like, yes, in your 30s and 40s, 50s, you know, you can still have plenty of engaging experiences in your life. In terms of, like, mass media and popular culture, there is this tendency to idealize stuff from when you're young, from your childhood, your youth, up to maybe your early 20s. And then to think that stuff after then just sucks. And it's true. It's it's harder to recapture that feeling of novelty as you get older, like just to watch a movie or a TV show that feels truly unique. There's some of them, there's been some of them in the last 10 years for sure, but it's true that things don't feel as new as they used to. And even for travel, even for other experiences, that can be true too. Like I I love traveling, but it's in order to feel the same sense of novelty when traveling that I felt when I was younger, I have to go to further extents. I have to like hike to the bottom of the Grand Canyon and back in order to feel the same sense of novelty and excitement that I would have felt from a much smaller hike when I was younger. But at the same time, I still do enjoy the smaller stuff when traveling. So maybe that's not a fitting analogy because I don't feel that travel loses its fun in the same way that you know media does as you get older. But at the same time, um, the question has to be asked, is it not just because we're getting older? Because there is an obvious proven link between getting older and starting to think that things suck. And you see it with each generation. But nonetheless, the fact that you're getting older and naturally start to see things as shitty doesn't necessarily disprove the idea that things actually are getting shittier. It could be both at the same time. It could be that... Yes, it's a natural process to think that things are shittier as you get older, but at the same time, things objectively actually are getting shittier. And this can be true with media, it can be true with society in general, with like the rise of, you know, wokeness and SJWism, that it feels like everything really is getting shittier. Uh, And with all this COVID crap, all these lockdown restrictions, absolutely. And with people just becoming more and more addicted to technology. And now with COVID reinforcing that by telling people not to leave their homes. um, Yes, absolutely. Things are getting shittier in many ways. And with climate change too, like more and more fucking natural disasters, forest fires, hurricanes, getting in the way of enjoying yourself during what are supposed to be the nicest months of the year. Absolutely, fucking lutely things are getting worse. So that's the thing. On one hand, things objectively, I think, are getting worse in many ways. But on the other hand, people have a subjective ten- tendency to prefer things from their young years, their childhood and youth. And there's also, as I said, a ton of people who were born during the millennial generation, which is why you have a lot of people basically idealizing the exact same time period right now, like the 90s and the 2000s, especially the early 2000s, like saying, if only we could return to that era. And there's also a political context to it, too, because the 90s and the early 2000s were basically a time, even the late 2000s to an extent, where it's like we had some of the modern technology we have today, but there was also less of this wokeness. And now I'm seeing increasingly even among people just wanting to return to like the early 2010s because it's like we had pretty much almost all the same technology as today. Well, not quite, but almost. But yet the wokeness hadn't gotten quite as bad as now, even if it was still fairly bad then. So it's like, again, there's depending on how old you are, there's a different era you may idealize in terms of both politics and media and anything else but at the same time there is a tendency to idealize things from when you were young but things could be also objectively getting worse
So those two things can happen at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive. Now, here's the real question. Are things really objectively getting worse? Now, I'm looking at this right now in terms of media. Um, it is true there's less originality. Um, there is a lot less originality in most genres. Emphasis on most. I would say actually in the 2010s, we've actually had some of the best horror movies of any decade. I'd say the 2010s may be the best ever decade for horror. We've had a lot of really interesting horror movies that are different from creative and different from what you've had in past decades. Movies like Annihilation, It Follows, Mother, Hereditary, The Witch, Midsummer, um, a lot of movies like that. And then other movies, horror movies that are a bit more formulaic, but still very good, such as Sinister and at least the original Paranormal Activity. I think that was technically the late 2000, like 2009, but it ushered in a lot of the 2010s horror movies. So it kind of feels like part of that wave. But like, okay, so horror, maybe not. Maybe horror, The Lighthouse is another great example. Maybe in horror, we're not seeing the decline just yet. But nonetheless, in many other genres, it's true that there has been things do feel a bit less original like in terms of action blockbusters sci-fi fantasy there's less of a sense of originality comedy has definitely been in decline too like there haven't been many good comedies in the last 10 years or so frankly um and so it is true there has been to some extent a sense of decline now what is the cause? Is it wokeness? I think wokeness has definitely decreased the quality of a lot of stuff uh, by shoehorning it in. You can see this with like Terminator, Dark Fate, The Last Jedi, the 2016 Ghostbusters film, just like ruining these movies by shoehorning in aggressive wokeness. And also, in some cases, just aggressively diverse casting that's kind of just like <clears throat> diverse to the point of it being distracting. Like... Why does everybody look like, you know, a bunch of university students in Toronto or New York City? You know, like this like eclectic group of di overly diverse people. Like you see this with like the new Star Wars trilogy, for instance. So I'm not discounting like the fact that like, yes, in some ways things are in decline. And yes, there's way too many sequels, reboots this idea lately of like movies being super nostalgic, like even the new Ghostbusters film that came out this year or the force awakens the, the new star Wars movies in general. Um, this idea of being overly reliant on nostalgia, oh, the Jurassic world movies too, just like way too reliant on nostalgia, way too formulaic, way too much a copy of the original. There is that going on, but at the same time, at the same time, I think, because of this tendency people have to see things as getting worse as and to idealize their youth, they may ignore certain ways in which things have actually gotten better lately, or at least have remained constant. Like, for instance, I'd argue that the horror genre has improved in the last 10 years. We've had a lot of amazing horror films. We've also had movies being a bit more daring to be morally ambiguous or dark or have endings that aren't totally schmaltzy happy endings. I think The Dark Knight was a film that was very influential in that regard, where even mainstream blockbuster films are now a bit more willing to dabble into kind of darker themes, more moral ambiguity, uh, endings that are not as happy or formulaic. I think sometimes that can be a good thing. Sometimes it's good to have movies that are more morally ambiguous and interesting in that way uh, and not as cliched. Although, again, you run the risk of having dark being the new cliche, uh, which you can see in some movies and shows that just kill characters off constantly. Like, I think The Walking Dead is a bit guilty of that. 24 became a bit guilty of that, where the anti-cliche kind of becomes the new cliche. But at the same time, I think I think there have been some aspects in which movies aren't necessarily getting worse. And same with TV shows. Like, there's been a lot of good TV shows, even now, but especially, like, in the 2000s, the early 2010s. And, I mean, maybe the golden age of TV is starting to come to an end, but it's been it's been going strong pretty long now. And, like, undeniably, there have been some great masterpieces 
you know, movies in the last decade or so, like Inception, Blade Runner 2049, Mad Max Fury Road, um, you know, uh, Joker, Dune. There have been some really good ones. And, you know, TV shows also, like Game of Thrones up till the final season, uh, Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad, Ozark, Peaky Blinders, Squid Game, uh, at least the first season of Westworld. You know, there's been some pretty good stuff. And I mean, yeah, I think the golden age of TV is actually starting to come to an end, like especially this this year, 2022, with a lot of the best shows ending. Better Call Saul, Ozark and Peaky Blinders all coming to an end. I think we are starting to see the golden age of TV come to an end. But it's been hanging on pretty long, right? And I think there is this tendency among a lot of like right wingers in particular, but also depending on people's age, like a lot of millennials to idealize the last few decades, the earlier decades, like the 90s and the 2000s, and then ignore that the fact that in some ways things are still pretty good these days in terms of a lot of the media being put out. Like there's still a lot of good stuff being released. And even in terms of music, like, I'd say a lot of my favorite bands are from, as I said, the 90s and 2000s, but there have been some great bands that have come to prominence within the 2010s, like Alcest, uh, The Midnight, uh, stuff like that, Neoblevascaris. Maybe not as much as in the previous decades, but there's still been some pretty good ones. And yes, I mean, if you looked at my top albums of the decade, a lot of them would be legacy holdover bands, like, you know, stuff put out by Radiohead, Tool, uh, Stephen Wilson, Deftones. I'm not denying that. Like, I mean, a lot of the favorite music that I have from this past decade is music that is kind of similar to music from the last few decades or literally by the same bands in some cases. I mean, there's been some innovative stuff in the 2010s. It's true. Uh, like, I'd say Black Gaze is a pretty innovate, like, which is spearheaded basically by Alcest and Deaf Heaven has been a pretty innovative genre. But by and large, yeah, okay, fair enough. Like, there is definitely a slowdown in innovation to some extent. I don't think it's total shit to the extent people say in any of these mediums. But yes, there's been a slowdown in creativity. And I think part of that is also, in addition to the factors I've already mentioned, it's also the fact that uh, with the improvement of technology, there was kind of just this explosion of creativity in the 90s and 2000s that came with the technology finally being good enough to make all this stuff that probably people wanted to make for decades, like in terms of special effects for movies, in terms of just sound quality for music, in terms of a lot of stuff like video games in general, like video games were in their infancy in the 90s as an art form. So, I mean, technology is a huge part. The fact that you had this huge explosion of creativity in the 90s and 2000s because the technology had finally come to fruition to the extent that you could make all this stuff that people could only dream of in previous decades. And I think with that explosion there would be inevitably kind of a bust afterward because once, you know, once you have the technology to make all that stuff, there'll be an inevitable plateau afterwards or a decline afterwards. Because with new innovations in technology, the new innovations aren't leaps like back in the 90s and 2000s. So with the smaller innovations in technology, there's just simply not as much innovation and creativity that comes with the innovation caused by a huge leap. And I think another thing, as I said, not only were, were the 90s and 2000s an explosion of creativity because of knowledge, I'm sorry, because of technology, but also because I think culturally we were at a point where we were liberal enough to not be constrained by like, you know, the Hayes Code, stuff that constrained creativity back in the 50s and 60s with strict moralism. But at the same time, we weren't so liberal, so leftist as to now be constrained by political correctness to the extent we are. Like now, the left, the liberals are the new Hayes Code, the, the SJW Code, the, the Bechdel test, the is it woke enough test, you know, that's the new Hayes Code. So I think because we were 
at this point culturally back then, it just simply allowed for a certain create a certain period of creative of creative freedom, which I'd say started probably in the seventies and lasted until maybe you know the late two thousands, early twenty tens. And now we don't have it as much today because of wokeness and the constraints of that. And I think the reason why many saw the peak as being the 90s and 2000s more so than the 70s and 80s is simply because of the combination of that creative freedom with technology, uh, improved technology. Like the technology in the 90s and 2000s got a lot better than in the 70s and 80s. And, and frankly, it also has to do with, as I said, generational trends. Um, there's a lot of millennials who grew up in that era. So yeah, I mean... My point is, it's it's a multifaceted issue. There's a lot of different causes. Um, and to some extent, it is true. Things are declining. But on the other hand, there's also the, the tendency people have to view things with rose-colored glasses from when they were young. So I think it's a combination of both these things. I'm sorry if this entire video seems kind of like a big brain centrist take. But I think there is some truth in this case that it is a combination of factors and it's not as simple as one side being accurate or the other. So yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about that.